Welcome to True Health Tuesday, and the truth will set you free. Okay, we got a new setup, so if you can, this is going to be a live one on Facebook, thank God, if that's working. But we got the regular one. Okay, so goal setting. How many people in here have set goals and not achieved them? Okay, the only people not raising their hands don't want to share. <laughs> okay, we always do. But, but look at it this way. So when you're talking about goals, it, it goals always has that negative connotation. It's kind of like, you know, a healthy drug. Okay, there isn't one. Okay, but, but when you look at this, why would you even want to do it? Well, first off, your whole life is based on belief systems. If your belief system is that you are limitlessly brilliant, okay, that your body is more energy than matter, and that you're a, a spiritual being on this planet, you're going to have a totally different world than if you're going home, watching Family Feud every night, you know, going to Walmart, and, you know, it, it, following the doctor's advice and getting your flu shots. So there's, there's a couple of different existences, but, but let's look at belief systems. Because when you look at belief systems, how are they formed? Because your life is literally based on how you believe it. You know, do you believe that your doctor is really smart and that your blood pressure is high? Okay, all of these different belief systems that you can have are formed by authorities. And, and you're going to see belief systems can change because it's based on what you've been taught. It's based on evidence, based on time. And this is how belief systems are formed. So you can believe that, you know, you're a contractor, you're an auto mechanic, something. But really, when you're talking about changing goals or changing your life, what if you had limitless ability to do that? What stops you from, from tapping into this abundant universe? It's your belief systems. So in order to set goals or to change a plan, we got to change your belief systems first. And I, I like this example. Have, has anyone in here ever heard the term, you only live once? Is that true? Well, it is if it's based on a belief system. But then you, you feel, you know, you hear crazy people and they say, nah, you live every day, you die only once. Well, that's a belief system. I could go along with that. Okay. And then, you know, we got, um, I mean, a bunch of people from different religions that feel that this is more of a training ground where we're continually coming back. Say you only live once to a Buddhist, they'll go, cool man, Nirvana, I did it. <laughs> I got up here, you know? So the goal is to learn more and then leave this planet. So, so it's really based on, on your belief system. So you have to change that in order to be able to make goals that are going to radically alter your life. Now, Shackleton, if, if you've ever wanted to read an amazing story, and this is one of the best business books out there, but it's a true story. Uh, around the turn of the last century, they had um, an across the land in Antarctica. They were literally going to sail down there and cross Antarctica. However, the ship got caught, crushed, and everybody had to get off of the ship and they had to survive. Now, at the same time, within a couple of years, there was an expedition at the Arctic, okay? And that ship also got caught, got crushed, and everybody in that group became a cannibal or died or froze. Nobody made it. This guy, now, I was, I was reading this. Uh, this is the advertisement to go to Shackleton. Now, imagine you're sitting there. It's 1914, turn of the century. You're kind of excited. Industrial Revolution's going you open up the newspaper and you see men wanted hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, con constant danger, safe return, doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. <laughs> Contact Ernest Shackleton. I know. Bo, you and me would be there. <laughs> I mean, think of this. But what happened is these guys, their ship was crushed. And they made it in the most inhospitable environment on the planet for 634 days. Everybody made it. Everybody made it. So this, without goals, without plans, how did they make it? How did this group make it, but the group in, in the Arctic not make it? Optimism. So do you have self-optimism? Do you have an idea 
that you're a special human being, that you have certain abilities, a certain energy about you. Well, based on your belief systems, you may have that, or those, those might be limiting you for setting a new plan or a new goal. Uh, grounded in reality. What is your reality? Is your reality that you're hurt, um, sick, mental disturbed, uh, you have irritable bowel syndrome, uh, it, fibromyalgia runs in your family, okay, it's genetic, you can't do anything about it. We had a patient th that today that came in from another chiropractor, and the chiropractor says, well, hon, your pelvis is unstable, so you can't wear high heels. You know, she was like four foot five, telling a four foot five girl not to wear heels. You're taking your life in your friggin' hands. Okay, and then uh, my chiropractor told me that I shouldn't wear my purse, that it's the purse that's bothering my shoulder. I said, do you know anyone that carries a purse that doesn't have shoulder problems? And she looks at me like, well, yeah. Okay, so the belief system of that chiropractor was stupid. Okay, it was screwed up. It was saying that this is a defective human being and they're not able to do the same things that other human beings can do. Do you know what I mean? So that's really reality. What is your reality? Is your reality that you're limited by, by your finances or by the crazy government that we have? Be aware of your self-talk. I'm going to give you an exercise on how to change that and find outlets for your friends or your feelings, which is easy if you're a guy because we don't have feelings. <laughs> Let go of guilt, okay? Now, this is a tough one because I made a mistake back in 1987 so I can identify with people that do make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. The only people that don't make mistakes don't make anything, okay? But the, 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 the fear of making a mistake limits people, but I love this, long-term goals and short-term milestones. So this is the key. So what we have to do when we're talking about planning, and I mean planning for next year, because if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, okay? You know, you've heard of those things. But this is a direction, this is a direction that you get a chance to take the rest of your life on. So this is more important than any aspect anything that you can have. You get up in the morning, if you have no goal, you're walking around at the grocery store in your underwear. Okay, do you understand? So you gotta have certain short-term goals. You gotta have an idea what the heck you're gonna do. So this is the way to change. And you can do question a why, but do, are you doing what you're told? Yes, of course you are. You're told that you have to have certain standards. And this is how your world is formed. Uh, are you told by, by your, your parents to go to school, by your doctor to take the medications, by the television that you're programmed absolutely, that our government is really sharp, amazing, the economy is strong, the world is amazing, we're going to make the planet great again. Anybody? Anybody? I want one of those little noisemakers that sound like a cricket. Okay? Because honestly, people are living in that delusionary environment. They're not seeing the ca catastrophe going on in Syria. They're not seeing, you know, the entire world economy changing. They're not seeing the things that are out there. But you can also look at this, do. Let's say we sacrifice a virgin or a goat to make our voyage safe. And let's say this was part of your culture, part of your belief system. So anything that you do, you're doing this, and you're doing it because you were taught by cultural authority to do it. Now, what happens if you sacrifice that goat and you still end it with a storm and your boat goes down? Let's say that you pray to, you know, the sun god and it rains. Let's say you do certain things according to society. Let's say you take your blood pressure medication and that causes an increase in dementia, cancer, and stroke like it says on the freaking label. Okay, let's say you take the cholesterol lowering drug because the person in cultural authority says that your cholesterol is high and then you develop heart failure like it says on the label. Okay, do you, do you know what I mean? So you gotta start questioning some of this because not just doing things for rote, not thinking of why, your life is gonna end up not fulfilled, okay, or not to its full potential. When you get to the why, why are these things being done? Why, why are, are, are the circumstances like this? Okay, why was I living in a storage unit with two kids for about six months? Okay, when I was going to school. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of things you gotta look at it. 
So it's really based when you get down to asking yourself questions at what is the, the belief systems that you have because this is what's formed your life. They say that everyone is a self-made person, but only the successful admit it. <laughs> True? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean, we had one, one I was working at an office when I first, um, I was st still teaching at the time and I was working. Uh, there were six doctors there, and this one doc was going, oh God, you know, it's really tough, you know, because he sucked at adjusting, he had no communication skills, he didn't understand that there's life force energy. He's an atheist and a chiropractor. And I'm going, how do you do that? How do you know that there's a life force energy inside of the body that you're releasing, that that brain sends this information down and animates and gives tissue life? He had no clue. And so he was radically failing in business. And I said, you know, you got to find out who's in charge of your practice and fire him. He goes, oh. Yeah, he was in charge. The world seems so insane that it's the result of a belief system that's not working. You can correlate this with every aspect of a person's life. To perceive the world differently, we must be willing to exchange our belief system, let the past slip away, our sense of now, and dissolve the fear in our minds. So is your belief system that you have the inflammatory bowel because your sister has it, or you have the fibromyalgia, or you have the health condition, or you have the financial condition, or you have this. Okay, we can change all of that. I mean, we look at, and this is out of Metabolism Clinical and Experimental, FDA-approved pharmaceutical drugs can cause changes in your body which will cause heart disease, cancer, dementia, um, schizophrenia, sexual dysfunction, bipolar disorder. This is brought to you by the pharmaceutical industry. So it means consequences for modern medicine are profound, so it, it would mean a current understanding of our pharmacology is an oversimplification. So again, I'm presenting something that is a belief system. See, if you're taking medications for your health, then you think it's keeping you alive. That's your belief system. In reality, your physiology doesn't hold that, okay? It's not, it's not right. So this has got to be different. When we think about how you think, it's called metacognition, okay? How do you really think? How does your brain work? Because we're one of the few species that we're aware of that thinks about how they think. There may be other species, but we're, we're not into interspecies communication yet. Um, you're not a victim of the world, but rather a master of your own destiny. It's your choices and decisions that determine your destiny. Brilliant. But how many people have formed what we're supposed to do right now in your own mind? What are the limits? Now, three different types of knowledge, personal knowledge, task knowledge, and strategic knowledge. The, the cool thing is that you can change this. I just want to present all the belief systems. Now, when we look at this, more belief systems on endogenous pharmacotherapy. This means that if you change your perception of reality, you change the chemicals your brain secretes, and that radically alters your physiology. How can that be? How can you change your perception? Well, let's just say you're walking down a street and you see a dark alley. Okay, just on survival basis, if you have been scared or have watched in any myriad of the television shows out there, you would think a dark alley dangerous, right? But what if you're walking down the street and you're pushing a shopping cart and you see a dark alley and you say, cool, man, I'll bet there's some aluminum cans down there that nobody got. Okay, why? Because you're searching in the dark alleys. So it's a different perception where somebody may think potential danger, it's based on your perception. And so if you're perceiving danger, your brain is gonna secrete stress hormones, adrenaline, cortisol, and your body's gonna respond to that. If you're secreting joy and love and excitement, dopamine and serotonin, then it's gonna change your physiology. So your entire physiology is going to change based on your perception, on your belief systems. And so all of this has to, has to do. So how, can, how far can we take this? Let's say we got an experiment. Let's say we published it in the Journal of Scientific Exploration. Uh, we inject a group of mice that 100% of the mice are going to die of cancer between 14 and 27 days. 100% die, guaranteed, all the time. They always do it. And so the experiment was 
the person that started the project rats in a little cage, or the mouse, and they hold it for about an hour a day and then they put it back on the shelf. And he did that. 100% of the mice that he held lived. Whoa, so this guy's got some really cool powers. Then they gave it to the assistant, 100% of the mice that that per person li lived. And they thought, wow, this is weird. Maybe it's the perception. Maybe, maybe it's the interaction. Maybe there's something else. So they got a group of college students. They told them it was a test for gullibility. <laughs> yeah, hold this rat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's see if you do it. 100% of their mice lived. So how does that work? Is there something beyond us? Like, is this where a body stops, or is there more energy emanating? You can say, you know, curling in photography, we can measure that energy source. What we do know for a fact is that these people, we may conclude that we are apparently able to cure, cure mammary adenocarcinoma on exper in experimental mice on demand. How do they do that? We don't know. Is it just an energy? Is, so if I said that you can cure 100% fatal cancer in an animal species just by holding them? And what's your belief system? I'm bringing this up because most people will run out of here screaming, saying, no, measles is dangerous and autism is safe. Do you, do you understand that? We have people all the time, kids coming in here on class two narcotics, you know, like Ritalin or, I mean, these, these uppers, they're prescription meth. And I tell the parents, you know, start the kid on a cup of organic coffee in the morning and that stimulant will have a calming effect and you can get them off the class two narcotics. And the parents typically say, gee, isn't coffee bad for them? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of this is to change, not to set a goal, okay? But it's to realize that your life is run by your belief system and that's in charge, that's, that's, that's in your control. You can change that. Okay, it's based on past um, perceptions and information and time. So what drives you? What's your purpose? Would you like to be healthier and happier? You know, you know the Eeyore guy from, you know, Pooh? Oh, same shit, different day. <laughs> you know? You work with these guys, okay? Hi, Bob, how you doing? Oh, don't ask. You know, it's always the same. It, it, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. So what if, what if your entire world is created by you? It is. And that means that I created being run over by a car. I created everything that brought me to this point. Okay, now if you realize that, and again, this may screw up your mind, change your belief systems, but debt, finances, health, how'd you like to change everything? This is where you do it. Okay, this is actually where you do it. Now, I've got this sheet. You can put anything you want around on this sheet. You can put um, love instead of romance. You can put anything you want. These are just seven areas of where, or eight areas, of, of good ways to gauge your life. Because if you don't know where you've come, you don't know where you're going. If you don't look at your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Okay, has anyone gone through multiple marriages or just me? Okay, good. I think I've learned. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Four years going good, baby. Yeah, okay. So, so this, you go here, and if you're doing really, really well in physical environment, you know, you're living on whatever you think is beautiful. Okay, for me, I'd be living on the boat, and I wouldn't be on land. Okay, right now I'm living on land, so I'm down here. Okay, the worse that you got, the less that you're achieving, you put closer to the hub. The better you're doing, you put it out. Does that make sense? And so rate yourself accurately. Why? Because you've got to be honest with yourself and where you're doing. Now, this is actually my chart, and I did it in 2014, 17, and 18. Okay, and you could see 2014 kind of shitty in some areas, good in others. Uh, but, you know, I'm trying to, to work on each aspect of it. Now, what's tough is if you're missing any aspect of this, and this is based on your values, 
Okay, what do you value? And, not, and I'm not talking about moral or religion or this. I'm talking about what do you spend your time with? What do you surround yourself with? That's what you value. Like if you say, oh man, I value accumulation of wealth, but I got to have that Louis Vuitton bag. You don't value wealth. You value name brands and that's okay. That's not me, you know, but I mean, if you, if you value that, okay. So, so everybody's values is different. It's like your fingerprint. So rate yourself because any area of your life that you're not mastering, someone else will take it over. I mean, you just ask uh, like the, the cultures that were dominated by European cultures where they were going in, in India, in Africa, they didn't have a cohesive social unit. They were built based in tribes. They didn't, they didn't master their technology. A group came in that had better technology and better organization skills and took them over. And we could see that now. So if you don't master your health and life, you're going to be taken over by cultural authority. If you're not mastering your health, if you're not taking charge of your diet, nutrition, nervous system, you know, your physical, chemical, and emotional stressors, someone will come over, give you medications, and take care of it for you. Yeah, now Demartini is brilliant. I recommend you go to his website and check out how to find out your highest values because if you start saying, oh, I should do this, I should do that, you know, you shouldn't be shouldn't on yourself. Okay, because you're living with other people's values. So let's change it. Now, this is the coolest thing. Let's say that you're stuck in a job, okay, that you don't like. It's not your passion, but it's paying the bills. Okay, let's say you have a relationship that you're not really excited about. It's, you know, she's nice this week, but she was kind of shitty last week. Okay, <laughs> you know, do you have stress in your life? No, you got up this morning and left him. He's in bed. <laughs> okay, you know, no, I hear all of this stuff in the exam room. Okay, so, so this is a way. Now imagine this. Now again, this is a belief system, so you might have to change it a little bit. Let's say that there's a universal intelligence, something out there that we're all connected to, that we're more energy than matter. Now I've got data that supports it, quantum physics. We, we are. This is part of my belief system. So how do you tap into it? What you do... You write down 100 things to do, be, or become. 100 things to do, be, or become. Now, you can get through 20, 30, maybe 40. But pretty soon, when you're filling out this whole friggin' list, you're going to be exhausted. You're not. You're going to be totally drained. So you make up stuff. But it has to be tangible. It has to be real. So, so instead of, you know, okay... I want to be happy. No, that's, that's not tangible. Okay, how do you gauge that? Okay, I want to swim the Great Barrier Reef. Okay, that's cool. I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Jeez, I'm at 67 and I don't know. Okay, I'm going to skateboard the Great Wall of China. Okay, so you start just coming up with fanciful things. This is when you're tapping into that universal energy, that universal intelligence, because you're going to come up with things that are crazy. Now, this is actually on my, my list. Do I want to open a clinic in Mexico? Okay, I've been working on this for a couple of years. Why? Because they're going to be changing how we're practicing in America. And in Mexico, we're going to do a neurologic clinic that I'm really excited about, where we can get people off of drugs the first day. We can get, you know, I and mean, we're talking full body thermography. I mean, this is going to be one of the most advanced neurologic rehab clinics in the world. We're talking dementia, Alzheimer's, everything. This has been like, damn. What do I want for Christmas? That. Okay, so... What do I'd like to be? I'd like to learn how to sail by the stars, okay? Because I know I can't trust GPS, and I'm, I'm reasonably good. I can do a good sighting with a sextant, but I want to be able to, to recognize the, 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 the structures in the sky, okay? And dive the Great Barrier Reef, I'm a certified diver. I'm a deep water certified, open water certified. But shit, the Great Barrier Reef, that's like 18-hour flight there, okay? Then you got to recover. Then you got to take, you know, 20 hours coming back. Okay. And for me to take a week off without doing anything, you know, that's not involved. And you know, how many people think that I'll be able to speak in Australia? <laughs> I mean, they kill anybody that's anti-vaccine. They stop you at the border and frisk you. 
So these are the examples, but the key is when you're filling out that 100 things, and you gotta do 100, not 99, 100, because you're tapping into this universal intelligence, this energy. Then you take a one, a five, or a 10. Could you do that in one year, five years, or 10 years? And this is when it becomes real. So skateboarding the Great Wall of China, could you do that in a year? No. No, you're gonna talk, you gotta get permission, you gotta get in better shape, you gotta learn how to skateboard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. You got some skill sets you gotta build. Okay, so skateboarding down the Great Wall of China, I'd probably put five years. I could probably do it in five years, okay? Clinic, I know I can do it in one. I guarantee you, without a doubt, I'm going down there this weekend, finalizing some things, I got the building plans, I'm not bullshitting around. One year, it's actually gonna probably be about five months. Okay, so assess the navigator. Okay, a couple of clinics, I do a bunch of other stuff. How many times do I get on the boat? Maybe once a month. Am I gonna be studying celestial navigation? I really doubt it. Okay, so give myself five years. Could I do it in five years? Yeah, absolutely. Dive the Great Barrier Reef, 10 years for sure. I could do it 10 years, you know. I'll do it for my 70th birthday, I'll be happier in hell. Okay, so this is what you do. Then you pick the top five one-year goals, the top five five-year goals, the top five 10-year goals. Now this is important because this is where it makes it real. All that fanciful stuff of you connecting the universe now becomes more tangible. It's like if you wanted to learn um, cooking in Italy, okay, uh, cooking in, in Florence, okay, how long would it take to do that? Could it be a year, five years? And this was just a thought by God. So now you're working out, what would it take to get there? Passport, you know, money, education, time, scheduling. It, it's amazing. And then, and these are the top five one-year goals of my 100 list this year. And I recommend you doing a list every year. Why? Because you're going to be always changing. This is fun, it gives you a plan. So I'm gonna open up the clinic in Mexico, I'm gonna work out three days a week, teach or take a seminar a month because I've gotta get that, that, that connection with, with all my colleagues and to learn stuff. Um, take a day a month to reflect and plan. A day a month, imagine that. You got one day a month that you schedule for you to just think, what the hell did I do this past month and what am I gonna do next month? Okay, simple. Connect with family twice a year. It might seem that I don't like family, I'm just not good at it. Okay, but I got together with my sisters this past year and just, I dug it. So then you do um, a vision board, okay? And the vision board is cool. Now, now this is pertaining to me. This is what I like, okay? So, so I got the clinic in the upper left-hand corner, which it really doesn't look that way, but it would be really cool if it did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little, like 1,800 square feet next to another clinic, okay? The guy with the gray hair in the middle is not, it, he is, he is one, of my, one of the idols that I grew up with. He was one of the, of the speakers, he's named Dr. James Zigafoos, inspiring. He, he's still, he's uh, died a few years ago, but he's still in my heart. So when I talk about speaking and presenting and taking, this is my goal, this is, this is the guy that drives me. Okay, and then that's my family in the lower left. My daughter-in-law, son, son, wife. Okay, so connecting with family. So I get this, and no, that isn't my back there in the middle, that is my front on the left. <laughs> so working out three days a week would be a good idea, okay? You know, it's just time, but what do you do? You gotta schedule it. So, so this is gonna be my vision board, so planning, it, and, and it just makes sense. So now, let's say you got the 100 things to do to be or become. This was taught to me by one of the most successful people on the planet. When I say successful, I'm not talking financially, okay? Financial is part of it, social is another, appreciating life is a third, healthy is a fourth. You come up with every aspect that you can imagine, okay? And if you're hitting all of these at, at the peak, then you are successful. That, would that make sense? I mean, you could have different different gauges. I'm just going on every aspect of your life. If you're hitting all of them good, you're rocking. So now this is how to achieve one of those. That means that you have all of these goals, 
you have to achieve one of them. And this is a way to guarantee it. Guarantee it. Now let's say you wanted a boat. Let's say you wanted a car. Let's say you wanted a relationship. Let's say you wanted a vacation. This could work for anything, but it has to be tangible. You're not going to put happiness. Okay, that's delusional. If you're happy all the time, you're mental. <laughs> if you're sad all the time, you're mental. Okay, you got to have this balance. You know, I always think positive thoughts. Always. Yeah, you're sick. Okay, you got to have this balance. So, you write down whatever you want to get. It's on the top. That's it. That's what you're going to get, guaranteed. Okay? Then you write 20 specific actions underneath it in order to achieve it. That's it. Now, again, it's you, a piece of paper, and a pencil. So you're tapping into that universal intelligence. And you're going to go through. And once you complete those 20 aspects or 20 items, 20 actions, you are guaranteed, without a doubt, um, going to have whatever the heck you put up there. And it could be a yacht, could be a car, could be health, it could be anything. Let's say, because this is just a clinic in Mexico, find a list of clinics, check what the clinics offer, um, find emigration status. Do you realize I have to emigrate and I'm not worried about the wall? I actually think the wall is to keep Americans in and not other people out, okay? So, so you know, at least I know how to use a shovel and I can get underneath that sucker. Okay, check the hours of operation. Okay, we're at this clinic five in the morning to six at night. I found out down there, no clinic opens before nine. Dude, that's like midday. I can work out, I could go swimming. I mean, this is gonna be a blast. Okay, list of ultimate diagnostics. So I'm going through to arrange the clinic. So by the time I get down to 20 and complete that, does anybody have any doubt in here that that, that task will be done? It has to be done. It has to be. It's impossible to not do it. The challenge is, I have told this to so many people and very few people have done it. Very few people. Why? Because of the belief system and they don't know they can do it. Absolutely. So if you want anything in this world, change your belief system, do this and you'll get it. Now, the why behind it. What happens if you don't change? What happens if you don't do any of this stuff? What happens if you go through the next 365 days, okay, and you're still the same? Cool. Maybe you're really content. Or maybe you can make a difference. You know, let's say that, that you have financial issues. Beautiful. Don't pray to pay your bills. Pray to donate. Okay, pray to have such limitless abundance that you can make a difference in other people's lives. You know, let's really expand this. Let's take it up a notch. Okay, fulfilling your highest values. Values change, and they're unique like a fingerprint. Find what drives you. I mean, you could be the greatest dancer in the world, or, or you know, but you're stuck at Home Depot. You know, you could do anything you want. Now, um, my, my oldest son is going to Poland. He is going to be setting up eco homes like Earth ships. He's planning a bunch of stuff. Now he's going to Poland. He's going to be getting a backhoe. He's going to be building this stuff. Does anybody know about the building codes in Poland? <laughs> so does he have like an insurmountable amount of shit that he's got to get done to get this project up, running, and working? Yes. So. When we started chiropractic college, it has a higher failure rate than medical school. It takes, you spend longer in chiropractic college than you do in medical school, about 250 hours longer. So, and it's tougher. Okay, why? Because we're the ethnic kids on the block, okay? We don't have pharmaceutical sponsors, so we gotta be a little bit better in anatomy and physiology. And so, I was scared. And, and this, this old guy, Dr. Carl Cleveland, comes in and says, you know, it's a big project. Going to chiropractic college, it's like eating an elephant. Okay, have you ever eaten an elephant? So right now, all of us were thinking, he's senile. Okay? He said, no, you can't eat an elephant. You just got to slice it real thin and take it one piece at a time. Okay? So big project, slice it real thin. He's going to get through it. But do you think he might come up with some failures? No shit. That's guaranteed. Nobody's idea comes out perfect all the time.
But if you're hung up on failure, by God, look at Edison. You know, he did, what, a thousand yeah. different samples, and he said he never failed once. It was a thousand-step process. Okay, look at this. Fail forward fast. That's a Tony Robbins thing. But if you're afraid of failure, you're afraid of doing anything. So just stay home. But man, what if? What if you made those goals? What if you made those changes? What if you did that hundred things to do to become? You had a totally different aspect of your lifetime, uh, of your life, your future, your everything. And that changed not just your world, but all of those around you. And then you said, look, you're limited by just your potential. Your potential is limitless, but you don't freaking know it yet. Okay? Does that make sense? I know, I think it's cool. <laughs> so this is the pattern. I'm giving you the tools. You don't have to do it. You can have the same year that you did last year, except the country won't be here. Okay, the economy is going to be changing. The infrastructure is going to be radically different. The dollar is going to be radically devalued. The rest of this month, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of changes, okay, and how to prepare for them. So if you think everything's cool, we're going to go home and watch Family Feud and then go to Walmart later, okay, it's not going to be like that in a year, okay, or five years. So let's take advantage of this change and this shift, okay, let's, let's be, take charge of it. So healthier, organized, live life to the fullest, learn new hobbies, but if you don't believe that you can do this, you're not going to do it, okay, anytime you're changing, Make it in the present time. Don't, don't, you know, all I want is less bills. Yeah, boy, you'll achieve that. <laughs> Hell no. Okay? The, the universe doesn't have a limit. Whatever you're, you're putting out, you're going to get. Health, vitality, not less bills. I'm appreciative for living in a world of abundance. Okay, think of how you can word it in the present tense. Um, some of the keys, okay, because you got to take care of yourself. You have to have good sleep. Check out our sleep videos. You have to have sufficient nutrients. So this means a plant-based organic seasonal diet. Why plant-based? I'm choosing it because it's better for the planet, okay? Plant-based is good. You can eat animal products, you know, once a week to once a month. That's totally cool. That's what the people in the blue zones do. If they eat animal products, great. I actually had a comment on one of the videos. You bastard, you're promoting veganism, and that's bad for health. Plant-based diet is good for you, organic and seasonal. You can eat animal products. If you eat animal products once a week to once a month, that is not a vegan. <sighs> <laughs> no, no, no. I know, I know. It, it's, it's, I don't really want to slap people that often. Okay, exercise and play. How many times do you play? You know, when you go up at the counter... Okay, and you're going to the supermarket or, or the farmer's market. Um, wish them. Give them love. Say, hi, thank you. How are you doing? What did you do to play today? And they'll go, play? <laughs> you know, I'll say that to my patients because you've got to do something for fun. Prayer and meditation. Sleep. Get general sleep patterns. Check out our video. If you have to work at night, you can change this. But optimal human function is six and a half to seven and a half hours. If you're getting up at night to pee, you suck at sleep. Watch our sleep videos. Change your patterns. Sleep. Juicing. Absolutely fantastic if you're in a stressed state. Why? Because it breaks down the nutrients pre-digested. If you're trying to get healthy, this is good. I mean, if you put one serving of fruit. So now, think of this. Making 100% change is a lot. Make a 1% change a week. Okay, is that doable? Yeah, you'll have a 52% change. However you gauge change. Okay, do 1% a day and you'll be friggin' crazy, man. Okay, this was, was our old house when I had my sons living with me, and that was our typical weekly production of juice. Yes, Henry Ford... I studied him. He is cool. <laughs> Mass production. The guy rocks. Okay, these are just good smoothie recipes. I mean, check it out. If you grind up the fruit, if you have inflammation, that's your body uh, repairing tissue. Inflammation is not a destructive process. It's a tissue repair process. Fresh fruit has antioxidants in it that takes care of the free radicals and allows your body to heal. Healthy food every day. I mean, this is just, we're talking simple and basic. 
It's so easy to put a tomato, a potato, some green beans, and some turmeric inside of a bowl with some sea salt. Heat that sucker up over a couple hours. It's absolutely delicious. Every day you got to do something fun. Okay, if you're if just walking, park further away. If you can't walk, move your arms, okay, every day. And symmetrical movement is, is phenomenal. It, you got to do it. Now, this one, the I am exercise, and that's on the back of this. Because one of the things, emotions are chemicals secreted by how the brain perceives the environment. And what's a trip is, I do a lot of consultations with people, I mean, literally in every place around the world. Okay, the box on the bottom, okay, these are actually two boxes of self-talk words. The box on the bottom, 100% of the people I've spoken to over the last 20 years in every country you could possibly imagine, I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you how many languages, but I mean Ethiopia, West Africa, Ghana, India, China, Norway, Japan, New Zealand, I mean, every country you could possibly imagine, they all have the same self-talk words for anxiety, stress, fear, pain. Everybody, we all, we're all the same. So if you have had chronic illness, injury, depression, anxiety, stress, whatever, okay, and you've had it for a while, your brain's set on that programming. So your brain is secreting these chemicals based by past experiences. And we do, well, like, like an example, if I show you a picture of a puppy and you thought, oh no, that dog's gonna crap on the carpet and chew my shoes, your brain's gonna secrete adrenaline and cortisol. If I show you the same picture and you think, oh my God, that's my best friend, I'm gonna cuddle, dopamine and serotonin. So it's not based on the stimulus. Any kind of stimulus. You could hear a, a, a fire truck go by and one guy will say, God, I wanna be a fireman. And the other one will say, oh shit, my cat was killed by a fire truck. You know, just a fire truck stimulus. So it's not based on what's actually happening, it's based on your perception. The I am exercise using neuro-linguistic programming can actually change that. Does that make sense? So everything, when we look at physical, chemical, and emotional stress, when we look at, at nervous system, exercise, nutrition, deep sleep, prayer and meditation, all of this stuff, this is all in your control. And it all begins with setting a plan. You notice how I didn't say goal? Because I mean, people still got that, oh shit, goals, I don't want to fail. A plan, damn, I could do a plan. Okay, I can do a plan, yeah, yeah, let's make a plan. Okay, so let's make a plan. Let's figure out every aspect of your life that's, that's not working optimally, or let's change somebody else's. Okay, does that make sense? I know, it, it's gonna be a good year. Um, we got Extreme Health Academy. Go there, check it out. There's tons of free stuff, and then there's podcast webinars everywhere. Um, Extreme Health Academy is, I mean, I actually like the stuff they do, and I'm there too. So it's kind of cool to work with Justin and Kate. They're really, really sharp on the health field, and they're just neat. Um, our cruise is packed up. Um, we leave in a couple of months. This, this one's going to be fun. The next one is going to be in 2020, if, if the, the world is still here, and it's going to be in the Caribbean. And we're actually redoing this site. I think it's, is the Dr. John Bergman site still up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up. We've got some things that we're working on it, but this one is a great site, tons of information. So let's make a difference. Thank you very much.